Now, whether or not gelatin is the appropriate hydrocolloid or appropriate gelling ingredient to use uh, for a given recipe depends on the properties of that recipe and depend on the properties of a gelatin gel. So gelatin gels melt at a fairly low temperature, pretty close to body temperature. So you're looking at about uh, 77 degrees Fahrenheit on the low end or about 104 degrees Fahrenheit on the high end. So this means if you're planning on serving a gel cold, ice cold straight out of the refrigerator, uh, this is going to uh, be a good gel for you. Now, if this uh, gelatin dessert or gelatin uh, appetizer, whatever it is you're making, if this needs to sit out at room temperature uh, for a long time, and it's a little bit warm, even though the melting temperature is at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, gelatin starts to actually soften uh, much lower than 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius. So say you're going to be doing like a big party, uh, banquet style desserts or banquet style canapes, and you're placing uh, gelatin based items out on uh, your counter, you want to make sure that it's the room's either at an appropriate temperature, it's nice and cool, at around 68 to or uh, about 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, um, or you want to use something else like agar, which we're going to talk about in a separate video. Now, because gelatin melts at about body temperature, gelatin has a really good, soft, elastic, su uh, supple texture, which is one of the things that chefs really like about gelatin gels. Now, gelatin also has really great flavor retention and flavor release, and this isn't uh, true for all gelling agents, and gelatin actually has one of the better flavor releases out there. So this pretty much means that whatever uh, liquid flavor you have going into your gelatin gel is going to be maintained throughout the uh, gelification process or gelation process. Uh, so you're going to have a really good flavor retention and flavor release when people actually eat that item. Now, one of the drawbacks to using gelatin is it doesn't really like acidic environments. Its pH tolerance ranges from about 4 on the low side to 10 on the high side. So as you can see, it has a pretty high alkalinity tolerance. I mean, 10 pH is fairly alkaline. So there's not going to be a whole lot of things that you're going to be making, uh, like a, a gel or a terrine or anything along those lines. It has a higher alkalinity uh, than 10, but pH 4 isn't that acidic. It's slightly on the acidic side, obviously 7 uh, being neutral, but something like citrus, if you want to make like a grapefruit terrine or a mixed uh, winter citrus terrine, the pH is much more below that. In fact, the mixed uh, winter citrus terrine that I make, I've tested the pH and the citrus pH equals about 3.2. Uh, give or take a few points, depending upon you know the time of the year and how developed the actual fruit is. So if you're trying to make a citrus terrine, gelatin really isn't the gel you want to use. Uh, we switched to agar, and it works really fine. Again, we're going to talk more about agar uh, in the future and why you'd want to use agar over gelatin or gelatin over agar. Uh, but to suffice to say right now, gelatin's a great gel for flavor retention, but if you're trying to set something with a low pH, anything below four, you're gonna have issues with the stability of that gel. It might set up on you slightly, but it's not going to uh, hold its shape that well. It's gonna melt very easily. Now, gelatin gels themselves do have a few inhibitors, meaning that there are certain ingredients that will cause a gel not to set or cause it to set more loosely, and those are salt, acids, prolonged heating, especially above 140 degrees Fahrenheit, protolytic enzymes, such as those found in fresh kiwi, papaya, pineapple, peach, mango, guava fig, and high alcohol. Now, typical concentrations for seasoning, about uh, half percent on the low side to one percent by weight on the high side. Uh, your salt content should be fine. If you go any higher than that, you might have issues with the gelatin weeping or basically uh, loosening up and releasing some of its liquid. Uh, acids, again, anything below four you're gonna have issues with prolonged heating like we talked about in uh, our previous little uh, board here. You wanna just make sure that you're bringing it up to no more than 140. And if you do have it at a higher temperature than that, you wanna cool it rapidly. And then protolytic enzymes are basically enzymes that will soften the structure of uh, protein. So you see things like papaya, pineapple, mango, guava. These are actually used a lot of times these enzymes are extracted from these fruits and you'll find these in meat marinades or meat tenderizers because as it softens the proteins, 
of those uh, of of the meats that you're applying those tenderizers to. The, the, there's less of a structure, so the beets are more tender. In the case of using gelatin as a gelling agent, though, you're going to have issues. So if you're saying to yourself, you know, I want to make a pineapple uh, jello. Well, you're going to have issues if you want to use gelatin. You want to use another gel uh, for a pineapple, mango, peach, or guava. And so this is one of the reasons why we take the time to go through uh, information like this is because I don't want you to have to be incumbent on recipes, I want you to be able to make your own recipes and kind of let your creativity loose. So you understand the use percentage of gelatin is again, 0.6% on the low side to 1.7% on the high side. And with that knowledge and with understanding how to hydrate it properly, bring it up to the proper temperature, letting it cool overnight, you can basically make any flavored gel that you want. But then you take that idea and you kind of run down that path of creativity and pineapple or peach jumps out at you and all of a sudden you're like, oh, what the heck, you know, it didn't set. well. That's why, because you have those fruits, those fresh fruits contain proteolytic enzymes, excuse me, proteolytic enzymes that will dismantle the gelatin structure of a gel. Now, those enzymes are deactivated during cooking. So if you want to make a peach or a pineapple gel, you just want to bring that uh, puree, you want to bring that liquid up to a simmer first and then cool it back down. And then you should be able to set it just fine. Now, high alcohol contents above 40%, will also inhibit a gelatin gel. Now there is one cool sort of modern trick uh, to using gelatin. It does have a promoter and that promoter is transglutaminase, also known as meat glue. And if you combine transglutaminase uh, with a gelatin gel, it really strengthens those bonds and strengthens those structures. Now the way transglutaminase works, it actually cross links proteins. So again, when incorporated into a gelatin gel, what is gelatin? Well, gelatin is a protein base and it will cross link those protein strands much more aggressively. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Uh, Wiley Dufresne uses it for uh, various cakes that he fries in the fryer without binders. Uh, we've used this in, uh, you know, to great success doing a very simple rice cake where instead of doing the usual egg and other binding ingredients that would make it taste less like rice and kind of give it a different texture, we would literally take just a little bit of liquid, in this case we're using a saffron infused liquid, mix it with the rice and that liquid will contain melted gelatin. And then you use about a half percent to 1% transglutaminase in that mixture to create a strong bond. So again, a basic formulation of this is say you had about you know, 1,000 grams of rice that's already been cooked and you have 500 grams of liquid, that's gives you uh, 1,500 grams of bulk total. So in that 500 grams of liquid, you would dissolve uh, 15 grams of gelatin and 15 grams of transglutaminase, which would give you 1% by weight for the total amount of the ingredients that you have. And then you lay it out on a sheet tray, cut it into ring molds once it sets, and it'll set relatively quickly too, but you just wanna let it sit overnight. And then you can fry those uh, rice cakes in the fryer and they'll hold together. And again, this is advantageous because you don't have any extra binding ingredients. So I hope this discussion uh, on gelatin gives you a better understanding of when to use gelatin, uh, some of its attributes, some of its uh, strengths and weaknesses. So again, it has great flavor release. It has a really nice texture, uh, an elastic structure that dissolves relatively easily at uh, body temperature. So you're gonna get a really nice uh, mouth feel with gelatin gels. But again, if you have a, a low pH or you're trying to work with uh, fresh fruits that contain proteolytic enzymes, you're trying to create a high uh, alcohol gel, then gelatin isn't going to be what's right for you.